there are three main kinds of galaxies, and I like to call them uh, beautiful, boring, and ugly. Uh, the beautiful galaxies are the spiral galaxies, like our own galaxy in the Milky Way, like our nearest neighbor Andromeda. These are beautiful, gorgeous. They've got these spiral arms and dust lanes, and and, and sometimes the arms are like really tiny, and, and, and you've got lots of them. Sometimes there's just like two major ones, but either way, it's like a work of art. Uh, and then you have the boring galaxies, which are the elliptical galaxies, which are just big ellipsoids. They're just big blobs of galaxies like, well, here's a bunch of stars. Like, yes, we're a bunch of stars. Here you go. We're like, you know, it's it's like it's like the like the lazy one at work. Like, uh, hey, hey, we're supposed to design some galaxies. And like you've got some people like doing the cool spirals and really getting to it. And then there's and then there's that one person is like, you know, just on Reddit all day or something. And they're like. Oh, oh, when's that? Day? Oh, um, um, here you go. Here's my galaxy. Made it myself. Uh, and then there are the ugly ones, which are called irregular because we don't want to hurt their feelings. And these have all sorts of weird shapes. Uh, you know, sometimes they're lumpy. Uh, sometimes they're all twisted and distorted. Uh, sometimes they have holes punched through them. It's hilarious. There's a, definitely a rogues gallery there when it comes to the irregular galaxies. And we think we have a handle on why different galaxies have the shapes they do. We think, and we're not exactly sure because galaxy evolution isn't like fully understood. We're just beginning to map it out now. But we think the natural state of galactic evolution, like if you were to leave a galaxy largely left alone to its own devices, we think it would naturally lead to a spiral structure. It would naturally flatten because anything that's spinning in our universe ends up being flat uh, if, if you give it enough time and it's spinning fast enough. Like if you have a cloud of dust and gas and it compresses to something, it is going to squeeze flat. Yes, I know you can have spinning balls like planets, but those that's because that's supported by other things. Largely, you're going to get disks. And then what we think is causing the spiral arms is that if there are gravitational disturbances, like say, like say a small dwarf galaxy like hits the main galaxy or passes by, or a bunch of supernova go off, uh, you can send out ripples of of density. You know, like if a shock wave passes through, or just like, like another galaxy grazes nearby, and you just get that gravitational influence. It, it's like dropping a rock in a pond. You get these ripples. And these ripples move out throughout a galaxy, but the galaxy itself, and so these ripples are places with higher density average and then lower density than average. Not by much, not by much. It only takes like a few percent higher density uh, for these waves to go out. But the galaxy itself is rotating and galaxies rotate in such a way that the inner bits rotate faster than the outer bits. And the last piece of the puzzle to explain spiral arms, you have these rotating density waves. The density waves aren't perfect circles because like nothing's a perfect circle. Uh, and so they're a little bit elliptical. And so what you end up with is ellipses nested inside of each other with the inner ones spinning, rotating faster than the outer ones. And so there are places where the density piles up on itself and that's how you get the formation of these spiral arms and so we think spiral arms would naturally form if a galaxy is just sitting there living its own life in the spiral arms because they're regions of slightly higher density these are where stars like to form and these are where big stars like to form and so they light up with bright hot blue stars and that's what we see it looks like when we look at a spiral arm it looks like spiral arms contain the vast majority of stars in a galaxy but that's not true it's only like 10 percent more it's barely any more but they are brighter and bluer and so they stick out to our eyeballs they look more impressive than they really are but uh and, and that's what we think happens with a galaxy like by itself but sometimes galaxies can merge like the milky way galaxy is going to merge with andromeda in like five billion years 
in the middle of that merger process, it's probably going to look somewhat irregular. Like it'll get stretched out. It'll just get distorted. It'll get torn apart. It's going to look messy or irregular. So we think irregular galaxies are galaxies that have suffered a recent merger. And then as for the elliptical galaxies, we think these kinds of galaxies are the ones that have suffered too many collisions in their past, where galaxies are slamming and they're merging, big collisions. When these collisions happen, a lot of new stars form because there's all of a sudden so much more gas smashing into each other. And so you can trigger loads of star formation, but then it uses up all the fuel. Like when Andromeda and Milky Way merge, there's going to be a big boost in star formation for a while. And then we're just going to run out of gas. And so after the merger, after everything, the galaxy can't quite settle back into a spiral shape because it's been, dis been distorted too much. And so you just get a lumpy elliptical and then these elliptical galaxies look very red because there isn't new stars forming. And so you don't get any of those blues or whites. You just get the leftovers. You get the red dwarf stars. They're just hanging out. These elliptical galaxies are just like already dead galaxies or dying galaxies. These are post merger, post catastrophe, just hanging them by a thread just trying to get by. Uh, spiral galaxies are pretty common. They're about a third of all the larger galaxies. There are these larger galaxies, the spirals, the ellipticals, and the irregulars. And then there's also a class of what are called dwarf galaxies. Like the Milky Way has some orbiting dwarf galaxies like the Large and Small Magellanic Cloud. Uh, they have their own classification schemes. Sometimes you can get little mini spirals. Sometimes they're irregular. Sometimes they're just lumpy. Uh, but, but by and large... These are the galaxies that we have in our universe. These are the types of galaxies that we have in our universe. And this is how we think they get their shape. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for watching. And I know this is not my normal Ask a Space Band chalkboard, but like this artwork was so impressive. I just had to leave it up. I couldn't resist. I will see you next time. Please like, share, and subscribe and go to patreon.com slash PM Sutter to learn how you can keep this show going. That's right. You, you, yep, yep, you, you, no, 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 yeah, yes, you, that's it, that's it, see you next week.